All right. So now that we are going to start using this particular Playwright driver code within our step definition implementation. So the way we could do it is by going to the step definition file over here. And let's get rid of this spec flow scenario context. We don't even require it for now. And then we can also get rid of this code. And rather, we are going to call the driver that we implemented in our last lecture. And then I can also hit control enter, which is going to bring me up the introduce read only field for the driver. So this is the way that we could able to call the driver itself. While I have the driver, this is where the driver pattern comes in. While I have the driver object, I can then call the driver object in any line of code, which is nothing but navigating to the application as you can see over here. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to get rid of these scenario context.step is pending method, which is not required completely. I'm going to fully remove all these objects and uh, let's try to just call the driver property over here and then I'm going to say page and you can see that we get the only public property that we created in our last lecture which is the page over here and you can see that this is the only way you can access it and then you can call the go to async which is going to be the URL that you wanted to access and then you need to call the URL that you are about to navigate to, which is nothing but this one. So I'm going to copy this whole thing and I'm going to paste it over here. And you can see that this is the way that we could be able to navigate to this particular site. So let's try to run this code and see what is basically going to happen. So I'm going to build this whole solution. I'm going to go to the unit test and then I'm going to run this test and you will see that it is going to open the browser and the test has got passed. So which means something has really happened in the playwright world. It just did something and it worked. But there are going to be some of the caveat in our code really. We are going to dig into that later on. But as of now, let's start implementing or copy pasting some of the code that we have written earlier, which is nothing but the page object model code that we have written over here. So if you remember, these are the pages that we wrote before for the page object model code. So I'm going to use the exact same thing over here as well. So I'm going to go create a new folder. I'm going to call this as uh, pages. And within the page, I'm going to copy this upgraded code, paste all the property, and import the missing references, and rename the constructor. That's it. So you can see that we have just copy pasted all the code from our earlier lectures code. There we go. That's about the page of the model code. And now that we're going to start implementing the step definitions as well. That's what we need to do. So in order to do that, we can even copy paste some of the code that we have already written over here. So you can see that given I navigate to the application for that, we have navigated to the application, which is quite right. And the next thing we need to do is I need to click the login link. And the way we could be able to do it is by clicking the login button. And that's something we need to create using the object of the login page itself and how do i gonna do that well i'm gonna create a constructor object over here so basically i'm gonna say private read only login page and then i'm gonna say login page probably like that and this login page i'm gonna be setting it over here as new login page and it expects us to pass a page object which is nothing but the underscore driver dot page this one see that is the power of our uh, driver pattern itself we could able to get the page property and then we can pass it as a parameter to the login page that we wrote in our earlier section so please go ahead and watch that particular lecture before you watch this particular video if you don't get the idea of what this page of this model code that we wrote before well, yeah, there we go. We now have the implementation of the login page uh, being called directly over here. So this way, now we get the flexibility of clicking the login link. So I can just say login page dot click login. So this is the method which is going to do that. And once I do this, now you will start noticing some of the scrolly lines coming in. It says because this call is not awaited, execution of the current method continues before the call is completed. Consider applying the await operator in the result of the call. This is what I was talking about. We are actually using an async method, which is nothing but the click login method is basically an async method. And if you're going to be calling that in a non-async method, we're going to get this scrolly line. 
So in order to make this as async method, we are gonna start doing this async operation, which is gonna be async of task and remove this void from here. <clears throat> so this is very, very important. And once you use async, you need to use this await keyword. And now you see that the scroll lines are completely gone. So this is what I was talking about. We need to ensure that we need to make this. If not, the code is not gonna work. All right. And the next implementation we need to do is to work with the tables for entering the user details over here. So once I click the login and I enter the following details for the username and password. So we need to read that table information. And once again, to in, order, in order to read the table information, I'm gonna go to a NuGet package. I'm gonna search for specflow.assist.dynamic. This is the very nitty gritty useful library that is available in the specflow world where you can read the table dynamically so the way you can do it is you can just use the dynamic keyword of c sharp and over here you can just say table dot create dynamic instance so this is going to read the table dynamically and then you can use once again this is going to be an await keyword so i'm going to say uh, async of task and over here I'm going to say await underscore login page dot. I'm going to perform a login operation and then I need to enter the username and password. So I'm going to say string data, which is going to be this data and the table column name is going to be the username. So I'm going to say username and similarly, I need to also pass the password. So I'm going to say data dot password. So now you can see that I can enter the username and password over here. So now you can see that we are starting to implement the specflow scenarios much, much easily, right? And let's do a code cleanup here before we go further. There we go. It's all cleaned up. Very neat. And the last implementation that we need to do is the assertion operation, which is then going to help us to resolve all the different things that we have got. So again, this is going to be an async of task. And then over here, I'm gonna do the implementation for the assertion operation. I'm not gonna even try out a lot of different hardware because you remember we have already did that assertion operation in our existing code, this one. I'm gonna copy this code and I'm gonna paste it over here. And instead of this login page, I'm gonna say underscore login that is employee details exist. And this assert, actually I can do the fluent assertion as well. I can just say is exist should so this is a fluent assertion b i'm gonna say probably it's probably it should be true right so basically this is employee details should exist so you see that the fluent assertion is very very interesting in c sharp world once again this is another library which makes our life much much easier so you can see that we have implemented the step definitions for this particular feature file right now. The last thing we need to do is to run this code and see how it actually works, which we are going to be doing in our next lecture.